Sunday night or you were in the back. Uh, the Lord, we, we were able to attend Cal, Calvary Church in Florida on Sunday morning after the graduation took place. And uh, we were in an anointing. And God identified us out of the, <laughs> the place and uh, spoke this word. And I felt it necessary that you hear what the word of the Lord was because it's what God has been steady speaking into this church about this Gulf Coast. Amen. So I want to take a minute and let you hear that if we got it ready to go. Amen. 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 You know what that means? Hallelujah. Come on. God, praise. Why are we so radical? Why are we so passionate as Pastor Matt preached last Sunday? Amen. Because we know that we have heard from God and that there's a mighty move of God that is about to hit this Mississippi Gulf Coast. Not only is it going to hit this Gulf Coast, amen, but this move of God is going to sweep from the Gulf Coast all the way up through the state of Mississippi, all the way to the top of Mississippi. It's going to be a wave of God's anointing and revival that has never, ever been seen in this state, ever in the history of this state. Amen. It's going to make an impact, and it's going to make a sound. Somebody say a sound. See, it ain't a noise. It's going to be a sound. Amen. And it's going to sound across the nation. Glory to God in the ripples of the sound. It's going to impact all kind of places. And more fires are going to be ignited. Amen. It's just what God's doing. Just like He started in Arizona. Amen. And started releasing a sound out of Arizona. Amen. And it's been traveling the nation. And fires are erupting all over the place. Can I tell you right Right now that God released that word from a man who doesn't know us, doesn't know us from anybody else. Amen. But God said, let me deposit this word because I want it to be carried back to Mississippi and released with power and authority upon the state of Mississippi. It's about to happen. I'm meeting once a month with pastors from Jackson, from McGee, amen, now another brother in Socia, another brother planted in Destiny, five pastors coming together, we'll be together next Tuesday, praying together in McGee, Mississippi, and we're praying for one thing. We're not praying for Uncle Buck and Aunt Susie. We're not praying for the nephew. We're not praying for that. No, we're coming together because we know God is sending revival first to the church, amen, in the state of Mississippi. And then God is about to flood a great awakening amongst those that are lost and undone without God. Greater deliverances, greater miracles, greater signs and wonders, amen, that will just boggle the minds of people in this state. Can I tell you that this move of God is not going to be kept inside the church, but it's going to visit the governor's office. 
It's going to visit the mayor's, not one. It's going to visit mayor's offices all over the place. Can I tell you right now, there's going to be prayer meetings that are going to start up in city and, and state buildings. Amen. That are going to start calling on God. Why is that? Because Mississippi is still a conservative state. Amen. That's why God is about to pour it out on this place because we're about to embrace it and we're about to become a place where God's presence, amen, can multiply and be sent out of this place, amen, to touch other places in the nation. You better start being careful when you say, God, I just want to do your will. Because he's going to start smiling. That's just what I wanted to hear. Hallelujah. But can I tell you that God's will doesn't always line up with your plan and what your ideas are? I guarantee you that John the Revelator, when he was praying and saying, I just want to do the will of God, amen, he didn't have written down in his journal, I can't wait for the day that I go to the Isle of Patmos, amen. I can't wait till I'm on that deserted place, amen, and it's just a, it's a place of hell without going to hell, amen. But that is where I'm going to get the download from heaven that is going to reveal the revelation that's going to impact the world for the glory of God. Can somebody say, Shout amen. Hallelujah. God's will and God's purpose is about bringing God's purpose to pass, not my purpose. Well, glory. We're going to go to the book of Acts. Hallelujah. I'm fired up. I think it might show a little bit. I am fired up. I already said that. Anybody else fired up? Craig desires your prayers. Why does Craig desire your prayers? Because Craig's going to be preaching man mercy house. Oh, come on. What is he doing? He's stepping out of his comfort zone. He's stepping out of that comfort place and saying, I know there's a call of God on my life. And I've got to do this because it's God's call. Not because I'm comfortable. Not because I think I'm just going to be the greatest there ever was. It ain't got nothing to do with that. I know I've got to be obedient to God. He desires your prayers to cover him that the anointing would just explode in him. Amen. Acts chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 1, if you're there, say yes. Verse 1, in my first book I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. Understand what he just said. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. A dead man is actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Verse 4 says, Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Somebody said amen. amen. Come on, Lord. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, and when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. Verse 8, here's what he wants you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Why do they need power? And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, 
in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way that you saw him go. Hallelujah. He told them that the important thing that is that you go to Jerusalem and you wait for the promise of the Father. See, he knew he had to remind them because in just a few more words, they're going back to the fact that, well, okay, we heard what you said about waiting on the promise, but, but what we really want to know are you fixing to set up your throne? See, I'm glad Jesus has lots of patience. Because I'm sure in his mind he was thinking, are they even going to get this? I need them to wait. I need them to receive the promise of the Father in order for them to effectively do ministry that is going to change the entire world. I need them to hear what I got to say. Can I tell you tonight, amen, that what God came to Destiny Church, amen, on this particular night, on the seventh day, it would be in them waiting ten days for the power of God to fall, amen, on the seventh day. Can I tell you the message that God is trying to get to us, amen, is that Pentecost is absolutely critical. It is most important. The experience with the Spirit of God is an absolute. It's not something that's just for those radical people. Amen. You know, those ones that are over the top, those ones that want to shout, those ones that want to run, they want to dance, they want to do all that stuff. I'm not that way. I'm just introverted. We got any introverts in here? Yeah. God didn't say, well, you're an introvert. I won't make you do what I want you to do. He said, no, you're going to step it on up. Amen? Sometimes when I'm talking with people and I tell them, well, I'm more introverted. Patty's more extroverted. They say, yeah, right. We saw you when you was preaching. <laughs> that, that's a wrong assessment. That's a wrong assessment. See, this here is him moving from within and moving without. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you right now that God is not hindered by your, your personality. God is not hindered by whatever you did in your, your personality discoveries. Amen. God is not hindered by that, nor does he take it into a, account when he's assigning what he wants you to do. God said, let me tell you what it's about. It's about that I created you. And I said in Psalms 139, I said you were fearfully and wonderfully made. The design that I put on you was complete. It was full and it was necessary for this world today that you live in. And I didn't make no mistakes, amen. But I made it where I'm ready to pull it out. And if you'll do what I called you to do, amen, I'll impact this world. And people will be rescued from a destiny. They're headed to hell. They'll be rescued for heaven forever. Amen. God is interested in Pentecost in our life. Amen. I want to I want to talk about the foundation for Pentecost. Sunday we're going to unpack Pentecost. But I want to talk about foundation for Pentecost. See, when building a foundation, God wanted to to make that happen so the Holy Spirit a man can build on a Pentecost experience. See, it's not a just about Pentecost, but it's about having an experience of Pentecost that launches us forward to do what God wants to do. Amen? Amen? How many of y'all know that, that the most important aspect of, of a house is the foundation that it's built on? 
I was watching building off the grid the other day, and they was building a house up north, and they had to build these blocks, these cinder blocks up about seven cinder blocks high before they put the foundation so they'd be above some whatever. I mean, you know, how, I don't need all that. Amen. But whenever it came time, they were not having the right kind of weather, Brother Ron, to dry the mortar that the boats were sticking out of that needed to become solid when they were putting that plate on and going to bolt it down. And little to my, my lack of understanding, amen, I thought, well, if they put the plate on there and they bolt it down, it'll be fine because the concrete's going to get hard at some point. And they said, wrong answer. Wrong answer. We cannot put the plate on here until we allow this to dry. Because if we don't, and we put this on here, and we build this house on here, and a wind comes, it'll blow this house right off of this foundation. I said, oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear you. See, I'm Holy Ghost talking to me while I'm watching TV. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Amen. We know that when building a house, whether it's on a crawl space or a slab, the most important part of building that thing is making sure that the foundation is sure, it is solid, and it is good. Then I can go on with the rest. See, when we look at stories of the early church and the, the change in the apostles from going to those fearful guys that they were and becoming the fearless guys that they became, we like to give all the credit to Pentecost. But can I tell you this? Amen. We have to realize that before Pentecost, Jesus was establishing a foundation that was being laid in their life. Amen. So that when he said, now I need you to take the foundation that I've laid in you and I need you to go to Jerusalem and I need you to stay there until the Pentecostal experience comes down on you. Can I tell you there's times that I've watched people that have come to, to realize that they needed Jesus Christ to come into their life. Amen. And they, 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 they made that, that step to go down and pray the prayer and ask Him to forgive them of their sins and all that. But when it came time to press on in, amen, to get that foundation solid and then being able to build on that foundation, <clears throat> they were nowhere to be found to begin to build on the foundation. Amen. They tried to take a foundation, amen, that hadn't completely been hardened up by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God and they thought they were going to leave and just live in a shanty house on top of what they had. Amen. Can I tell you, I've watched many, many people that when the wind began to blow against their house, amen, it came crashing down with great ruin in their life. Amen. And they were not able to continue to walk it out what God wanted to do in their life. I'm here to tell somebody tonight, God wants to shear up your foundation. God wants to pour out His Spirit upon your life. God wants to make a deposit that will put something in you that will make it happen for the glory of God. Amen. Some people feel like I, I'm, I'm just going to be this way forever. No, you're not. You're not. I got news for you. Hey Amen. I hope we're going to be able to get that staff thing done that I, I'm, I'm working on. We're going to get it done. We're going to get the dates put on there. We're not dates, but we're going to put the events of me getting saved, me going to prison, me going here. And we're going to label those things down that staff because that's going to be my testimony. Amen. Glory to God. Can I tell you right now that God is about moving in people's lives and helping them understand. Amen. Yes, it ain't just a, a cakewalk after you come to, to give your life to God and you say, I'm ready to sell out and walk with God. And I thought when I gave up my life to God and I started walking with God, amen, He'd protect me from all the onslaught of the devil. Can I tell you that's bad thinking. That's a bad idea. It's wrong thinking. Amen. God left you in the world. Amen. That the devil is running ramshot in people's lives and allowing to but God left people here that are full of the Spirit of God, that are full of the light of God, amen, so that hope can be delivered to the hopeless, amen, that the broken can be raised up and be healed, amen, so that those that are demonized, the demons can be cast out. Can I tell you that God believes in His church, God believes in His kids, amen, and it's time that we begin to believe in what God believes in tonight. Whew. You got to hurry up. I ain't even started. A 
Our text today tells us of a time between the resurrection and Pentecost. And that's where the foundation lies. But hear, hear me. The lost can be found. The sick can be healed. The demonized can be delivered. Miracles can happen. Because the power of Pentecost is alive and well today, right now. Somebody said amen. amen. We just have to realize it and get the foundation in order. See, tonight, some people are going to get out of their seat tonight. They're going to come to this altar right here tonight. And Pentecost is going to come down on their head. It's going to happen tonight. They're going to recognize that what they've been doing is they've been building a foundation. They've been settling a foundation. Amen. But now it's time to move ahead. Now it's time to, to get rid of myself. And now it's time to allow him. Amen. See, I, I heard a pastor say a while back when he was preaching, he said, he said, when you get saved, amen, you get the Holy Spirit. But when you get Pentecost, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, then he gets you. Come on now. See, that, that's what we're trying to shift to right now. We're trying to shift. We got him in us. We got the foundation started. Amen. We got it going on. But we're ready to build on that thing. We're ready to go forward. So I need the Pentecost experience to come down. I need the fire of God to burn hot on the inside. I need revelation knowledge to be exploding on the inside so I can see what God is up to with my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So how do we do that? How do we lay a firm foundation in our life and in our church for the Holy Spirit to build on and just begin to do this stuff we know that He wants to do? Number one, you want to write these three things down. We must become convinced of the presence of Jesus. You say, well, that's, everybody knows that. No, they don't. No, they don't. If you follow people around with a video camera and watch their life, you'd find out by their life that they do not believe that the presence of Jesus is walking with them everywhere they go. They would not say or do half of the stuff they do if they knew Jesus was there with them. Amen? We've got to become convinced that He was there. The disciples were assured that Jesus had overcome death. They were assured that Jesus overcame death. I mean, Jesus appeared to his followers in some small groups, some larger groups, he, at, at least 10 times following his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Jesus showed up. He wanted to establish, before he ascended, he wanted to establish and make it solidly sure that Jesus died went into the heart of the earth, went into hell, stripped the devil of his authority, took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, ripped it out of him, and came back with a testimony of saying, all power in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me. Amen. Jesus came out of that tomb. He rose again. And then before he went to be glorified at the right hand of the Father, he said, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to show up to these folks, and we're going to establish this foundation. We're going to establish the foundation. In John 21, and I'm not going to go there, we see that there's several uh, places that talks about Jesus interacting with the disciples, having a meal with them, doing all kinds of things with them, talking with them, and having it. We've we seen one place where Thomas, he came in. Of course, uh, don't, you know, don't you just hate to be the big mouth that would do this? We've walked with Jesus. We've cast out devils with Jesus. We've healed the sick with Jesus. We've seen miracles with Jesus. We've done all this with Jesus. But then whenever they say, Jesus is risen again, Thomas, I ain't going to believe it. I ain't believing it. Well, we, this is the deal. This is what happened. This is how he, I don't care. Unless I can put my finger in his hands, I ain't believing it. Look at Jesus' patience and love. He just shows up through the wall. Hey, big mouth. That ain't what he said. Amen. <laughs> I think he should have said that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, big mouth, come put your hands in here. But he didn't. He respected him. He honored him. Told him to do it. And, of course, that pierced his heart. 
All that was done to let you and I know this was a real encounter. They really encountered Jesus Christ. The presence of God was authentic. It was authentic. Somebody said amen. Amen. They were thoroughly convinced that Jesus lived and was always in their midst. I believe Jesus just, he had to, he had to do it where they had the doors locked. Why did they have the doors locked? Because they scared. Amen? Amen, they scared. Ethan, Ethan runs around all the time. You scared me to death. Oh, that scared me to death. That scared me to death. I said, man, you're the scariest boy I've ever seen in my life. They were scared. Jesus just kept showing up. He didn't care if they locked the door or not. Could you imagine standing at the sink, washing some tomatoes? All of a sudden, Jesus stands behind you, taps you on the shoulder. Hey, what's up? (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. But we need to get it. We need to grasp that same concept that Jesus is alive and that he's still in our midst. But but let, let me qualify this statement right now. It's not just say it. It's believe it, amen? I'm going to tell you right now, people out in this world, they know if you're, just, if you're just bumping your gums. They know if you really believe it, amen? Because if you really believe it, it will really show up in your life, amen? There will be evidence about the presence of God living within you, amen? There will be evidence by the statements that come out of your mouth, amen, if Jesus is there because the fear of God will be there, amen, and things will be different than it is in people in the world. Amen? We have to believe that He is working on us, He's working in us, and He is working through us to radically change this world. That's your purpose for being alive today. Let me tell you something. If He didn't intend to change the world through your life, why did He leave you here? That wouldn't even make good sense. I mean, I would think that if I was the Savior... And all I needed was you to get saved, and that's the end of the deal. Amen. Then it would be time. Let's get them saved. Oh, they did it. Boom, you're here. Boom, we got that one. Boom, we got that one. Oh, boom, we got that one. Amen. That would make sense. But that ain't what his plan was. His plan was we're going to redeem them. We're going to put the original plan back in motion in them, and then we're going to use them to change the world. Glory to God. Amen. That's what he's after. So we got to grasp the concept of a living Jesus who is constantly in us, in our midst by the Holy Ghost in order to begin to build the foundation of Pentecost. Amen. Secondly, we must realize that Jesus Jesus isn't through with us yet. We had a great song during river time. Oh, glory to God. Amen. He ain't done with me yet. Oh, look at somebody by you and say, he ain't done with me yet. He ain't done with me yet. Come on, church. Look up here, pastor. He ain't done with me yet. Glory to God. Amen. He's still working on me. You heard what the man of God, when he laid hands on me and said, hey, another a new na- a mantle is coming on your life. I'm thinking, glory to God, Lord. We're going from glory to glory to glory. Amen. And, I, and I'm pumped up about it. That's why you hear us crying out in these river time prayer. God, I know there's more. I'm thankful for what you've done up to this point. I'm glad that I'm not where I used to be, but God, I'm not where I want to be. God, I know there's more in you, and I'm relentlessly pursuing the presence of the living God. He ain't done. The disciples joined together in prayer and fellowship, waiting on that promised power. They realized that when that power came, it wouldn't be the end, but would be the beginning of something spectacular. It wouldn't be the end. Oh, the Spirit came. Glory to God, we're done. Even though they had done a whole lot of work, they had done a whole lot of stuff, already been done, they realized that when the Spirit was poured out, amen, Peter, you know the one who denied Jesus three times. Guess what happened to him in that Pentecost experience? Same guy that was intimidated by a little girl at a burn barrel. 
What are you talking about, Pastor? Yeah, walking through the courtyard, warming themselves by the fire. Amen. And the little girl said, Oh, he's one of them. Man, he liked to win off on a little girl. Amen. But the same guy that was that fearful individual that did not, he wasn't sure about the foundation at this point, amen. But when he come out of Pentecost, amen, he come out of Pentecost with a fire burning on the inside, amen, that said, I don't care if all these people hear me. I don't care if all these people know where I've been, amen. I'm about to declare, amen, the only hope for this lost and dying world. I think for preaching his first message, 3,000 people birthed into the kingdom. That's a pretty good start. Whew. That's better than the mega churches in America. We have to realize that we can receive that same power, and when we receive it, then we must realize that it's not the end, but it's only the beginning of the work that Jesus will do in us and do through us. It's only the beginning. Glory to God. Brother Craig, is he's fired up, man. He's been serving God. He's been walking with God. He come out a bunch of junk, come out a bunch of stuff. He come out of stuff that the devil meant to destroy him and to wipe out his life. Amen. But Jesus got involved, redeemed him, pulled him out of the pit. Amen. Set his feet upon a rock. Amen. But you know what? That wasn't the end. Amen. That wasn't you're born again. You're not going to hell. Amen. Jesus said, I put your feet upon a rock. I established your going. I put a song in your mouth. Mouth. Amen. People are going to see it. They're going to hear it. And they're going to put their trust in me. Amen. That is the story of every child of God in this room. That God wants to pick you up. Put you on the foundation. Amen. And then begin to move through your life. Impacting for the glory and honor of God. You know, here, here, here's the deal. I'm going to say this real quick. In this house, my prayer is that it becomes the norm for believers in this house to see people getting born again every week. We rag on Anthony a lot because of the boldness, because of outgoing whatever, and we quickly want to label people like that and say, well, it's just his personality. If I had his personality, if I had something different than I have. No, see, that ain't going to fly. That's not going to fly. What we got to do is get stirred up with what God has done for us. Amen. When I realize what God has done for me, amen, I don't have to be a theologian. I don't have to have a master's degree. I don't even have to went to Bible college. All I got to do is open my mouth and say, let me tell you something. In the midst of your brokenness, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your suffering, let me tell you what a good God reached out and did in my heart and my life. And that will rescue the deepest, darkest, perishing person on the planet it was Jesus' idea to do something through you not you so he has the greatest confidence it's going to happen glory to God hang on to your seat watch this Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 verse 19 I gave this somebody counseling the other night amen this would be the translation to memorize it in too Now you understand, this is Jesus speaking. Now you understand that I have imparted to you, say imparted to me. I have imparted to you my authority to trample over, and I put in there the enemy's kingdom. You will, say I will. Trample upon every, say every, every every demon before you and overcome every, say every, every, overcome every power that Satan possesses. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise God. That's what God said about you. 
And oh, here it goes again. I might do that flip off the stage today, brother. Absolutely nothing. Say absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. Absolutely nothing will harm you when you walk in this authority. Now you have to ask yourself one of those questions I always ask. Did Jesus tell the truth every time he opened his mouth? Uh oh. Uh oh. According to the words of Jesus, as a believer walking in their authority, how many demons are going to overcome them? How many, how many situations, uh, the schemes of the enemy is going to prevail against a believer? I overcome all of them. So, oh, here we go, Pastor, here we go. You're going to get me under condemnation because I'm really battling some stuff. No, this ain't about condemnation. Uh, this is about acknowledging what the Word of God says. And then you need to pick up the sword of the Word of God. And you need to begin to declare at your house, hey, amen. I, I, man, I, I, sent, I sent Shane and Angie a, a, a prayer, hey, amen, cleansing house prayer. And as I went over it for them, hey, amen, I printed it out for me. I said, oh, glory to God, i got to go through this again. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. And I just begin to go in my office right now. I begin to declare that over my house. I begin to say, oh, God, this is the God that I serve right here. Hey, amen. There ain't no devil in hell. Hey, amen. This God, anything can bring against me bring against my house bring against my property amen no I've been given the authority amen to trample underfoot everything the devil brings my direction in the name of Jesus God's people have got to rise up and say enough is enough amen Pentecost has come Pentecost has come Whew. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. Here we go. I'm going to deposit something right here. Identity of who I am and whose that I am in my relationship with Jesus Christ will determine whether I walk in that authority. There are many good, good people that love Jesus. That if you pin them down and try to get them to tell you how they see themselves as a child of God, they do not see themselves as that one that's walking in authority that the enemy has no chance to prevail against their life. They will not. They will back into a corner fearful because they really don't know how to answer the question because really their identity is tainted. Amen? And let me tell you, you say, how do I get over that? Let me tell you, there's only one way and most people don't like it. And that is declaring out of your mouth what the Word of God says against everything that your mind and your flesh is telling you or even somebody else is telling you. Can I tell you there are other people that will tell you that you're something contrary to what God's Word says and you need to rise up. You need to look the devil in the face. See, I'm going to tell you right now that every uh, abusing statement, every statement that comes against me to tear me down, amen, to make me not have value and have purpose in what Jesus has established in me, I rebuke and bind and renounce it now because I am a child of the Most High God. Amen. I am born again, washed in the blood. Amen. And there's nothing the devil's bringing my way that's going to prevail against me. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 28, verse 18, then Jesus came close to them. Say, He came close to them. He said, all authority of the universe has been given to me. Now watch this. Now it shifts. Now wherever you go, Look what just took place. 
All authority has been given to me. Now you go. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that he inhabits you. He's wanting us to understand that Luke 19 is all about what he said in Matthew 28. All authority has been given to me. Now you go. I got your back. Amen. I have equipped you. I have empowered you. I've got you. Amen. All I need you to is rise up and say what I've said. Amen. Stand on what I've said. Declare what I've said. Know that you're going to enforce the victory that I have already paid for. The victory that I have already won. The victory that I've already imparted and implemented into you. That you're going to stand up. Look at hell. The world. The devil. The flesh in the face and say I stand victorious in the victory that Jesus paid for me I hope somebody's getting as excited as I am amen we must realize that we have work to do and Jesus has given us the power and authority to accomplish the mission remember this he doesn't call the equipped he equips the called Oh, you thought that I was born with the ability to do this. I still don't know how to do this. If you'd have saw me at that graduation, I was one nervous dude, man. Especially because they told me I had to preach in 20 minutes. And then I had that hat on. Are you kidding me? I started walking across the front, and I said, oh, my Lord, this hat is on my head. I said, how am I going to balance this, Brother Pat, while I'm up here trying to preach? Amen? And you know, the Holy Ghost kept that hat on my head, hallelujah, with the sweat pouring off of me, that big old robe, glory to God. He doesn't call the equipped, he equips the call. Everybody say, he's still working on me. Not only do we need to receive the strength personally, but we need to be strengthening each other. Jesus told the disciples to stay together and wait for the power. Did you know in the church today, they still have some of the same problems they had back there when Jesus was dealing with the disciples? When Jesus went in there for the Last Supper, they should have been washing his feet. You know what they were doing? They were talking about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. I'm going to be bigger than you. I'm going to be more than you. Amen. Did you know it's still happening in church right now? That some people can't pray for each other because they're trying to get that person's position. They're trying to move in that place where that person's at. They want to be recognized where that person's recognized. I mean, because you try to get some people, hey, I want to serve. I want to do something. Okay, go clean the toilets. No, I don't want to do that. I want to be the worship leader. Jockeying for position. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Let me tell you something. We got to get together, work together, and say, you know what? Hey, all I care about is we got a big picture mission going on. Hey, man, we got a world that's lost and dying and going to hell. Six billion people that don't know Jesus, and a whole bunch of them are right here around us. Hey, man, and I got to do whatever I got to do to stand with this body of believers that God has put me a part of, and I've got to make sure that every brother and sister in this building is able to accomplish the peace and the part that God has called them to do. Oh, hallelujah. I knew it was going to get quiet right there. Hallelujah. They banded together. They prayed. They talked about. They pondered all that happened in their lives as they waited in the upper room for the promise of the Father. We need to do it not just once in a while. We need to do it continually. We need to get a kingdom mindset. Did you hear what I said? We need to get a kingdom mindset. Hallelujah. See, we we, we need to get to the place where we understand that no matter what's going on, the bottom line is they need to be born again. They need to be made a disciple. 
that can follow after Jesus Christ. I don't care if they do it at Destiny. I don't care if they do it at, at Northwood. I don't care if they do it at, at, at Family Worship Center. I don't care where they do it at. The kingdom minded says, I got to pour into people and they've got to get pumped up and wired up and ready to follow after the purpose. Amen. And we've got to help them understand that it is not sufficient. Amen. Just to attend church. Glory to God. It's not enough just to go get my ticket punch. Amen. Drop my tithe in the box. Amen. And say, I've done my religious duty. Now I'm about to go enjoy my life. That ain't church. That ain't church. Glory to God. That ain't church. Thank you, brother. I'm telling you right now, what church looks like is people coming together, crying out to God, saying, God, I need to make sure that I'm doing the purpose of God with my life and doing it to the very best of my ability. That's church. Come on, somebody. These are the foundations that we need to to see laid for an outpouring at Pentecost. And, And the next one is we must be willing to wait. I'm hurrying to finish. We live in an instantaneous world. Microwave, cell phones, remote start vehicles. Hey man, my truck don't do that. Hallelujah. My wife, she's, she's, she's blessed. Remote colored televisions, hey amen. Smart TVs. Sometimes the TV is smarter than me. Let's face it, we have to admit that a lot of the times we don't like to wait. We want it, and we want it now. Amen? How many of y'all shop online? See, I can go to christianbooks.com, and I know it's going to take five to seven days to get it. But if I go to Amazon, I get it in two. So now I have to weigh out whether I'm going to pay $2 more at Amazon or am I going to wait. Amen. I know I ain't the only one guilty of that. Amen. Hallelujah. I want it fast. But when it comes to the kingdom stuff, kingdom stuff needs patience and the willingness to wait on God. Pastor, I know God has called me to do this or that or the other thing. I know that it's burning it. I know. But are you willing to wait on the timing of God? Are you willing to Well, I don't know. If people are lost and dying and going to hell. We ain't got time to wait. I got to go. I got to get this done. I got, yeah, you're about to have a blowout. That's what's about to happen. <laughs> Believe me, I already done it. I already done it. All this stuff I talk about, I already did it. Amen. God spoke to me about what we were going to do here on the Gulf Coast, what was going to happen. Amen. Within two weeks, I was already jumped out the door, went to Gulfport and rented a building on Pass Road. Amen. We were ready to go. I bought chairs. I bought all kinds of stuff, stuffed them in there. We're knocking on doors to the neighborhood. We about, oh, the revival's about to hit. We spent three months doing nothing. I said, wow, maybe I didn't hear God. You see what happens? Maybe God never really said anything to me. So we went back to my pastor and submitted to my pastor and worked with my pastor and prayed. And guess what we did? We waited on God. And God continued to download vision. God continued to download purpose. And we continued to serve. We continued to serve. Watch this. We served another man's vision. Another man's vision purpose another man's mission and we served it with a grateful glad heart how many y'all know if i do it i'm doing it with passion and i did it with passion and then came the day where god said now it's time to go amen when we went we're living right now about september 21 years later here we are living out the vision that God began to download in me. Amen? Can somebody say amen? Jesus, Jesus, did you hear who I said? Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. You remember who Jesus was? Son of God. Remember the guy that was with God before and then became flesh? 
and dwelt among it. That same guy waited 30 years before he was released into ministry. Oh, oh, pastor, oh, surely not. Oh, glory to God. Surely you're not, oh, surely you're not insinuating that I might have to wait 30 years. I don't know how many years you got to wait. Smith Wigglesworth got saved at 50 years old. God launched him in ministry just several years after that. And Smith Wigglesworth served in ministry till he was 83, I believe it was, when he died. And so Smith Wigglesworth spent those 30, 33 years, 32 years serving God and changing the world. And his legacy is still changing the world. He was willing to wait on God. He was willing to wait on God. Amen. We need to remember that we're not waiting on God to get ready to move on this move in Mississippi. Hear what I'm telling. This is prophetic right here. Hey man, we're not, it's, it's not we're waiting on God to get ready to move. God is waiting on us to get ready for Him to move. God's patience is waiting on us. Hey man, I just don't like to pray like you guys like to pray. I don't care what you like. This ain't about liking it. It's about dying to yourself. And it's about coming to God and becoming a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Well, you know, bless God, I'm tired of it. I, I, I. Oh, I heard one guy said, I'm going to blame it on somebody else. One guy said one time, the road to hell is paved with excuses. The road to heaven is not. Don't be hearers of the word only deceiving your own self, but rather be doers of the word of God. Is anybody with me right now? Hallelujah. Sometimes we're called to wait on Pentecost, and that's when we begin to prepare ourselves for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit through prayer, study, and fellowship. And when the time comes, we got to be open for Pentecost to happen to you. So if Pentecost is going to come like a mighty rushing wind and the power of the Holy Ghost is going to shake the foundations of our church and rock our world, we need to already have the foundation laid. Amen. We already need to be full of the Holy Ghost. We already need to be full of the fire of God. We already need to be full of expectation, full of anticipation. Amen. That as people walk through the door, they ain't got to try to figure out if anybody here knows how to pray with them. They don't need to figure out if there's anybody that has time to minister to them, amen, they know right quick, amen, that the fire of God has charged this atmosphere. They came into the right place that something is about to go down and they're about to experience God in a way they've never experienced God before. That's got to happen by people intentionally and on purpose, putting themselves in the presence of God. We need to be open to the power and movement of the Holy Spirit now more than ever. The rivers of revival flow in us. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water, rivers of revival. Tonight, somebody is about to get set free. What am I talking about? I'm talking about somebody has been so dignified trying to, trying to, trying to Keep your relationship in this bubble where it doesn't get too far out of hand that you might get embarrassed. You might feel like you're, un, you're, you're, you're being undignified. Somebody might see it. Somebody might talk about you. Somebody might say something. We're about to move into a place away from that. We're about to say, you know what, God? I don't care what it looks like, God. I want that anointing that fell down on King David that day that they were bringing the ark of God. Amen. The ark of God represented the presence of God. That's what we're doing right now is we're opening up ourselves, amen, for the presence of God to come into this house, to come into this place, amen, to hit this Gulf Coast. I'm telling you right now that when David was walking into the city, amen, he began to say, you know what? I just can't do this no more. I got to strip this stuff off, amen. 
man, I got to dance a little bit. I got to make it happen. I got to go because God and his presence are more than enough for everything that I need. Yes. Amen. God's about to do it. I'm finished. I'm finishing right now. Mm. We must walk by faith knowing that sometimes it's not more knowledge that we need, but more commitment to what Jesus is asking us to do. For Pentecost to happen in our lives, we must be fully committed to the place God has planted us and fully committed to the task that He set before us. Let me, let me say this, and we're praying. You have to make a decision, number one. Do you trust the leader that God has put you under? Listen to me, church, all across this building right now. Do you trust the man that God ordained as leader in this house? Amen? You have to trust wherever you're going to commit. You have to trust. Because there's going to be things that comes across the man of God's lips that don't necessarily line up with what I'm comfortable with. But you know what? Because I believe that the man of God is sin of God and that the man of God has the voice of God, that I'm going to follow where the man of God's leading us and taking us because it's going to impact my world. Amen. It's going to bring me to a place that God is able to do exactly what he wants to do. And so you have to, you have to say, hey, I trust the people of God that God has put in my life to speak into my life, to pray in my life, to minister in my life. I trust them. And it brings us to the place that you've got to make a couple of decisions. Just close your eyes. They're playing some music. I'm going I'm I'm to get this ready right now, and we're about to do something. You must be convinced that Jesus is present in your life right now. And if you're not convinced of that, you got, a, you got the next few minutes to make that right. you got the next few minutes to make it from a religious experience into a personal relationship. Right now, Jesus, I want to know you in a personal way. Not a religious way. I want to know you in a personal way. I've got to do it. Amen. You must accept that Jesus isn't done with your life. That you are valuable and that you are important to Him. And that God has placed His hand upon you for such a time as this. Because God knows that pouring through your life is going to impact this world like nobody else could do your part. Like He wants to do it through you. you got to believe that God values you that much. you got to commit to being relentless in waiting on His purpose to keep you moving you forward. you got to be relentless to wait. God, I wait on you uh, unending. And you have to believe Pentecost must be an ongoing experience in your life. I don't get filled with the Holy Ghost. I've had people that I've talked to and I've counseled that I've said, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I've spoken to them. Yeah, when's the last time you did that? Well, you know, it was back in the day when we had revival. Uh, no, forget that. Forget that. I'm talking about somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're filled, that means it overflows out the top. Amen. It doesn't mean that it came to this level right here where it's comfortable and it don't never slosh out. It just stays right at that spot. When I'm full of the Holy Ghost, it overflows and it flows out and it goes out and touches other people. Therefore, it demands that there's a refilling that's happening in my life. Tonight, if you're serious, here's what I want to do first. Every leader in Destiny Church that's serious about going to the next level, I want you to come right now. Come on, church. Everybody stand all over the building. All over the building. Come on, church. I just want you praying right now, church. If you're not a leader, I, I, just, I just want you. We are so glad you joined us this morning for this service. We hope that God did incredible things in your life. And we are praying that God will continue to do great things in your life. Look, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook and you can see what's going on here at Destiny Church. But most of all, continue to connect and be personal in relationship with Jesus Christ. We love you. God bless you. We hope to see you online again.